Oral questions, questions orales, l'honorable chef de l'opposition. Le Premier ministre. The Prime Minister and his Arrive Scam app are not worth the cost or the corruption. After the revelations of corruption, waste, and so on by the Auditor General yesterday, I wrote to the RCMP to ask them to expand the criminal investigation into the Arrive Scam scandal. The Prime Minister has a history of blocking criminal investigations. Will he allow the RCMP to investigate him and his Arrive Scam scandal? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. The COVID-19 pandemic was something that happens once, not, not just once in a generation, but once in a century. And all the decisions we made were with a view to protecting Canadians. Clearly, we all expect the rules to be followed by the public service and by others. And we expect the RCMP and the authorities to do their job. But we should recall that this is the government that is concerned about border security. The Conservative Party keeps voting against assistance for CBSA, against assistance to strengthen our borders. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Well, when it comes to corruption, Mr. Speaker, the revelations yesterday are the following. One, that the company that benefited uh, drafted the terms of the contract. Second, two people working in uh, the basement of a house received $20 million under a contract for an app that should have only cost $80,000. There was also whiskey given to officials. Will the Prime Minister respect the independence of the criminal investigation? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Yes, sir, Mr. Of course, Mr. Speaker, we will always encourage and cooperate with authorities in doing their job, and that's what they'll do. The public service must also follow the rules, and if those aren't followed, there will be consequences. We welcome with open arms the Auditor General's report it's important to ensure that taxpayer money is being managed appropriately, even at a time when we're investing to protect Canadians from coast to coast. We still need to make sure the rules have been followed. Honourable Leader of the Opposition. This Prime Minister and his arrive scam are not worth the cost or the corruption. After yesterday's Auditor General re revelations of corruption, waste and mismanagement, I have written the RCMP asking them to expand their criminal investigation into the Prime Minister's Arrive scam. He has a track record of blocking criminal investigations. He tried to protect SNC-Lavalin from prosecution. He blocked the RCMP from investigating his illegal vacation to Billionaire Island. Will he stay out of the way, or will he again try to block the RCMP's criminal investigation into Arrive scam? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. The COVID-19 pandemic was a once-in-a-generation, even once-in-a-century occurrence in which every decision we took uh, was designed to protect Canadians' lives. At the same time, Mr. Speaker, even in a situation like that, there are rules that need to be followed, and we expect, and all Canadians expect, public servants to follow those rules, uh, and we will, of course, uh, encourage uh, the RCMP to do its work, but it does doesn't take politicians, even leaders of the opposition, to tell the RCMP to do their job. They do their job, Mr. Okay. Speaker, That's and great. they do it well. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. They do their job unless the Prime Minister blocks them from doing their job, like he did in his criminal offence where he, he committed the crime of accepting a gift from someone who was seeking a government contract from him. He blocked the RCMP from investigating him. And, he, you know, COVID-19 is something he saw as a once-in-a-generation opportunity to fill the pockets of his friends, whether it was the WE scandal, which he, in which his family received a half million dollars, or whether it was Frank Bayless, or now the Arrive scam. Will he stay out of the way and let the police investigate him and his corrupt government in, in Arrive scam? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. 
Speaker, even a few years later in the pandemic, we see the Conservative leader reverts to type. While we were focusing on protecting Canadians every possible way we could, they were peddling conspiracy theories, Mr. Speaker, about vaccinations, about what have you. So while he continues to make personal attacks, we're going to continue to make sure we're delivering for Canadians. And yes, we will make sure that all rules are followed and there are consequences for people who broke the laws or broke the, uh, broke the rules. But we will continue to be there for Canadians while he plays partisan games. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Proof that he's not worth the cost or the corruption. He's now calling the Auditor General a conspiracy theorist. Now that she's revealed that his arrive scam went from $80,000 to at least $60 million and counting. That two insiders got $20 million working from their home basement from this Prime Minister that top Liberal government officials accepted high-end whiskies and dinners in exchange for contracts that they let the contractors write for themselves. Shameful. So once again, will he stay out of the way and let the police investigate his government or will he try to block it again? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. The opposition needs to work on his French. I think he just needs to work on his listening skills. Because in French, two answers ago, I complimented and thanked the Auditor General for her work in ensuring that rules are followed and processes have consequences if they are uh, misdone. This is a fact that we know that even during a pandemic, uh, we need to be stepping up uh, to protect people along the rules. That's why there will be consequences uh, for anyone who broke those rules or those laws. While we continue to do everything, we we need to do to deliver for Canadians, to support people uh, in their daily lives, and build a better future for all Canadians. The Honourable Member for Belleau Chambly. My colleague from Montcalm made a proposal in connection with medical assistance in dying that would allow the final decision to be delayed when it comes to mental illness in general, while at the same time, accommodating patients or future patients uh, in terms of advance requests and in keeping with Quebec's desires. In that context, the accelerated passage of the motion that's currently before the House is possible. Would the Prime Minister vote in favour of the member of Montcalm, from Montcalm's amendment? Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we all know that medical assistance in dying or MAID is a difficult and very personal choice that individuals and families have to make in very difficult times in their lives. We know as a government and as a parliament that we are responsible for ensuring that vulnerable people are protected, but at the same time that people's choices and rights are respected should they choose to access MAID. We will continue the conversation, including with the government of Quebec, to find the best path to follow for everyone. The Honourable Member for Belle Chambly. Well, perhaps he should be talking to us. We're right here in this parliament. This is an opportunity to avoid problems for him with the conservative right wing, the religious right wing, and perhaps even some people in his own caucus. This is an opportunity to show that here in this parliament, we can find common ground and respect choices that are difficult and personal without it taking forever. This is not a time to... Uh, do anything other than making the compassionate and humane decisions, the Right Honourable Prime Minister. I'd like to thank the Bloc Québécois for contributing to this debate in a compassionate and thoughtful way. This is the type of conversation we should keep having here in this Parliament. How can we best protect Canadians? How can we best uh, respect everyone's choices and decisions? So we will continue to work on this. We'll continue to work with the provinces that are involved. And we will ensure that Canadians' well-being, all Canadians' well-being, is at the heart of whatever decisions we make in this very complex and difficult file. Be south. The Liberal appointed housing advocate gave this government a failing grade today. She says homelessness encampments are a manifestation of how broken our housing and homeless system is. She describes it as life 
or death crisis. While this prime minister says he could have and should have done more to build housing, it shows how out of touch he is. So will the prime minister take this crisis seriously, follow the recommendations, and ensure people have a safe place to call home? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I very much welcome the interest and the efforts of the New Democratic Party to support us in everything that we're doing on delivering on housing. We recently signed housing accelerator agreements with Quebec, with Nunavut, with cities across the country to unlock over 500,000 new homes. That's we introduced a suite of new measures to unlock the construction of over 600,000 new apartments. We cracked down on short-term rentals to unlock up to 30,000 more apartments. We introduced just a mortgage charter. We're continuing to step up on measures to counter homelessness, which is something that far too many Canadians are experiencing during these difficult times. We'll keep being there for people. Here, here. Have the, the Honourable Member for Burnaby South. Heard the housing advocate gave a failing grade to their government. La yeah. According to the Liberal appointed housing advocate, homeless encampments are a manifestation of how broken our housing and homelessness system is. She calls it a life and death crisis. Meanwhile, all the Prime Minister has to say is that he woulda, coulda, shoulda done more. Will the Prime Minister give his head a shake and stop listening to nothing but the advice of corporate landlords and help renters in this country? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. On the contrary, Mr. Speaker, we will continue to listen to community organizations, to municipal partners and provincial partners. We will continue to work hand in hand. We're signing agreements to accelerate uh, housing construction in Quebec and all across the country to have more than 50,000 new houses built and 600,000 new apartment units. We're still dealing with the problem of short-term rentals, and we're also dealing with the problem of homelessness and people in vulnerable situations, but we still have a lot of work to do. Years of this NDP Liberal Prime Minister, we know that corruption is a feature and not a bug. SNC-Lavalin, we charity, and now the Prime Minister's arrive scam at millions the Canadians won't get back. The grift and the mismanagement run so deep that the auditors couldn't even figure out how much got shipped off to Liberal insiders. So after what we learned yesterday, will the Prime Minister join us in calling the for the RCMP to get to the bottom of all of it, every single dollar. The Honourable Minister for Public Works. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And as we said yesterday, we welcome the Auditor General's report and will follow all of her recommendations when it comes to Arrive Cam. As the Minister for Public Safety said yesterday, some of the recommendations in the report have already been implemented, including implementing new measures to guarantee that tasks and deliverables are clearly defined in professional services contracts. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thornhill. Minister, the call is coming from inside of the House. They want Canadians to believe that they unknowingly got robbed blind by their own Liberal insiders and that they are going to get to the bottom of the Prime Minister's Arrive Scam app, which, by the way, didn't work we didn't need, and where 75 per cent of contractors did no work but had time to buy the government whiskey. He is not worth the cost, and he is not worth the corruption, and Canadians want their $60 million back. No one trusts them to investigate themselves, so will the Prime Minister stand up right here, right now, and call in the Mounties? Honourable <laughs> Minister of Public Services and Procurement. Thank you to our colleague for the question. As we said yesterday, we thank again the Auditor General for her recommendations on the review of the Arrive Can application. Some of the report's recommendations have already been implemented, including the introduction of new measures to ensure the task and deliverables are clearly defined in professional services contracts. Our departments take very seriously their duty to optimize resources. Exactly. 
The Honourable Member from Barry Innisfil. The Rive scam is just like the Prime Minister, not worth the cost and not worth the corruption. The investigation and damning report issued by the Auditor General on a Rive scam even shocked her. But really, after eight years of this NDP Liberal government, no one should be shocked by the level of incompetence and wasteful spending Canadians have seen from this Prime Minister. Now, a reasonable thinking person could conclude from the report that a Rive scam has reached a level of criminality. Yes. Will the Prime Minister join Conservatives and call on the RCMP to expand an investigation into a Rive scam based on the revelations in the Auditor General's report? Yes. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Public Speaker, Safety. As we've said in this House time and time again, any misconduct in the procurement process is unacceptable. We accept that the President of the CBSA has initiated internal audits and issued some initial reports. Mr. Speaker, she has also referred some of the concerning reports to the RCMP, but members opposite should know it's not politicians who direct the RCMP, it's the RCMP. The RCMP who does this work, and the RCMP will set the mandate for wherever the case may lead, and we will accept that work. The Honourable Member from Barry Innisfil. The question was a simple one, really, Mr. Speaker, but after eight years of this NDP Liberal government, who in this place or across Canada expects a proper response from a no. Prime Minister who's not worth the cost and not worth the corruption? The AG's report causes a reasonable person to conclude that what happened with the Rive scam has reached a level of criminality that must be investigated. So I'm going to ask again, will the Prime Minister join Conservatives and call on the RCMP to expand an investigation into a Rive scam? based on the revelations that were contained in the Auditor General's report. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, we obviously accept the Auditor General's report. We thank her for this work. There are obviously some concerning allegations uh, being initiated. This is precisely why CBSA initiated the audit. This is precisely why they then referred some materials to the RCMP. Mr. Speaker, it doesn't matter how many times the Conservatives say it, politicians do not direct police investigations. It's the RCMP who will do this work. And we we trust that they will follow the evidence and, again, procurement with any misconduct will come with consequences. The Honourable Member for Charlebourg, Saint Charles. Mr. Speaker, yesterday the Auditor General confirmed our worst suspicions. The app, ArriveCan app cost $60 million instead of 80000 and she said that the, the files are in such a shoddy state that it's impossible to calculate the true cost. This is unheard of. We need to know, is this a matter of gross incompetence or corruption? Will the government ask the RCMP to investigate further? Minister. Honourable Minister of Public Services and Procurement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. There's a number of things we know. The RCMP operates at arm's length. And as the Prime Minister just said, we have confidence in their ability to do their job. Secondly, the Auditor General did indeed reveal some shocking conduct in the public service, and this is undesirable despite how urgent it was to take action and provide assistance to millions of Canadians. Many of the recommendations have already been implemented and others will be shortly. The Honourable Member for Charlebourg, Haute Saint Charles. Mr. Speaker, seems to me that when you want to shed light on thing, things, a simple yes or no answer would do. We also learned that GC Strategies got $20 million, and there was no paperwork to confirm that anything was requested or delivered. And GC Strategies even got to set the terms of their contract. If the government has nothing to hide, they should say, yes, we want an RCMP investigation, and we want it, it, the scope of that investigation to be expanded. Will they? Yes or no? The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Once again, in a free democracy, it's not the government or governments that dictate to the police how they should do their jobs. That's not how things work in a democracy like ours that we're fortunate enough to live in. But. Public uh, servants have responsibilities. The Auditor General did find shortcomings 
in the work done by the public service, and uh, this, is, this is something that we need to take seriously. The Honourable Member for Montcalm. Mr. Speaker, medical assistance in dying, or MAID, is about free choice. The role of government is not to decide for others. It, the role of government is to provide the conditions for free and informed choice. Those who don't want MAID simply don't have to ask for it. The National Assembly is unanimous. Quebec is ready and has its own legislation. Will the federal government amend the criminal code to allow advance requests for people who are suffering? The Honourable Minister of Justice and Attorney General of Canada. Mr. Speaker, I have deep respect for the crucial work that Quebec has done in the area of advance requests. Canada has just one criminal code, and that's for a good reason. Canadians deserve to have consistent standards around what is criminal and what is not. There is no easy solution that would allow for Quebec to have an exemption from the criminal code in this area, but we will undertake to work with Quebec to contemplate the next steps. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Montcalm. Quebec would not have to ask for an exemption if Ottawa had applied the majority recommendations on advance requests tabled a year ago by the special committee. Today, Quebec is ready and patients shouldn't have to suffer because of the government's foot dragging. The federal government has two choices. They can either offer this exception from the criminal code immediately or introduce legislation on advance requests? Will they make the humane choice and show some compassion? The Honourable Minister of Justice and Attorney General of Canada. Mr. Speaker, MAID is a deeply personal and complex choice. We're trying to strike a balance between individual autonomy and protecting vulnerable people. We have taken an approach from the outset that is cautious, and we owe Canadians and Quebecers an approach that is thoughtful and cautious. The Honourable Member for Terrebonne. Let's recap the emergency account situation. If we project the figures, nearly 150,000 SMEs were unable to repay. Nearly 200,000 companies have had to take on debt to repay. In addition, some 50,000 entrepreneurs are still looking for refinancing. The federal government has a way of knowing the precise state of affairs and ensuring as, as few bankruptcies as possible. It could do so by examining SME files case by case. That's what we've been calling for from the start. Why do they always refuse? The Honourable Minister, Mr. Speaker, almost 80 percent of small businesses repaid their emergency loans. Given that it's Black History Month, I'd like to point out that there's a Black Entrepreneurship Program. That's a historic investment of $266 million, which to date has helped over 9,000 entrepreneurs. The Government of Canada has approved uh, some $50 million in assistance. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. False. Speaker, the $60 million Arrive Scam app is just like the Prime Minister after eight years. Not worth the cost, not worth the corruption. And what did Canadians receive for their hard-earned tax dollars? An app that was 750 times over budget, required 177 updates, forced 10,000 people into quarantine by error, and caused chaos at our borders, ruining any chance of a tourism recovery. Will the PM join us and call on the RCMP to expand its investigation based on yesterday's shocking report from the Auditor General? Here, here. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, any misconduct during a procurement process is completely unacceptable. This is precisely why when the CBSA learned of some irregularities, they in immediately initiated an internal audit based on some of that work. Mr. Speaker, they referred some of these elements to the RCMP. It's unfortunate when situations like this occur, but Mr. Speaker, it is also the fact that the CBSA has been following the process to ensure that something like this can never happen again and that any wrongdoing comes with consequences. 
The Honourable Member from Niagara Falls. Speaker, fact. The headline of the Auditor General's report on the disastrous Liberal Arrive Scam app said it best. Glaring disregard for basic management and contracting practices. This report is a metaphor of eight years of Liberal mismanagement, incompetence and disregard for hardworking Canadians. This app is just not, just like the Prime Minister after eight years. Not worth the cost, not, not worth the corruption. Again, I will ask, will the PM join us and call on the RCMP to expand its investigation based on the revelations of yesterday's shocking Auditor General's report. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, as I've said before, it is not politicians who direct investigations with the RCMP. And the RCMP will determine the scope as the evidence uh, permits. Mr. Speaker, it is important to know that any wrongdoing and misconduct in procurement will co come with consequences. We have confidence that the CBSA is completing this work. They're doing initial audits, and as I've said, the RCMP is looking into the matters where necessary. The Honourable Member for Miganti-Clérable. Mr. Speaker, imagine for a moment that you award an emergency contract to fix a leak in the roof of your official residence at the farm. You hire a contractor who tells you it'll cost $20,000. You give him the contract, he starts work, and then sends you a first invoice for $500,000 with no explanation. Are you going to pay it? No questions asked? Well, that's exactly what happened with the Prime Minister's Arrive Can app. The Auditor General saw it, the Ombudsman saw it, and no one in the PMO saw it? It's hard to believe, Mr. Speaker. Will the Prime Minister join us and ask the RCMP to expand its investigation to include all of the allegations? The Honourable Minister of Public Services and Procurement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As we've already said a number of times today and yesterday, we thank the Auditor General for her report. We note duly the shocking uh, revelations we understand that the circumstances were urgent, but that's no excuse for breaking the rules. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Mégantic-Lérable. The Prime Minister's Arrive Can app has forced the quarantine of 10,000 Canadians in error. The application was supposed to cost 80 grand, and now it's $60 million. The families uh, waiting in line at food banks deserve better answers, and the workers whose taxes are going to go up again are angry at having to foot the bill. Will the Prime Minister, who's not worth the cost, commit to giving back to families who paid for work that was never de delivered the money he wasted on the Arrive Can app? The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My colleague surely understands our answer now. We've repeated it many times. We thank the Auditor General for her report. We take note of the errors and missteps mentioned in her reports. Many of her recommendations we've already started implementing, and the rest we will continue to implement in the upcoming weeks. We acted in an urgent emergency situation. We had to protect the lives of thousands of Canadians across Canada, but unfortunately, things were not done at the standards we expect of public servants. Member from Nunavut. The Supreme Court's decision affirmed what we already know. Indigenous peoples have the right to make decisions about their own children, youth, and families. The federal government must ensure Indigenous children receive the care they need without delays. Indigenous Services plans to sunset over $7 billion in programs like Jordan's Principal and Inuit Child First Initiative. Will the minister commit to reversing her decision to make these cuts and invest in the programs that Indigenous children and youth need? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister for Crown Indigenous Relations. I'd like to thank the member opposite for her question and, and her accurate statement of the law. It was a big victory not only for Indigenous people, it was a big victory for Canada on Friday. Not only does the case say that Indigenous self-determination is available for Indigenous youth, but it also interweaves like a braid Indigenous laws, UNDRIP, and the notion of legislative reconciliation in this House. I think everyone would be better served if they are able to read this case and reflect on it in this House. Well 
The Honourable Member from Winnipeg Centre. Mr. Speaker, last Sunday the community of Carmen, Manitoba witnessed a tragedy when a mother and her three children and her niece were murdered with her husband as the main suspect. This reminds us that we desperately need shelters and safe housing for women and families and mental health supports to prevent femicide. But this government has defunded women's shelters while mental health needs continue to go unmet. Will the minister increase support for shelters and mental health services to stop violence against women and children? The Honourable Minister for Housing, Infrastructure and Communities. Mr. Speaker, it's not lost on us the scale of the tragedy that took place, and we endeavour to continue to do our part uh, to see that justice is done. But it's important as we go forward that we continue to invest in the projects that are going to provide people with the safety and security of living in a home that, uh, that uh, prevents this kind of incident from happening. Our programs do uh, provide support to shelters and transitional housing, in particular for women fleeing uh, violence, and we're going to look for additional opportunities to make the investments necessary to continue to build out the uh, uh, network work of homes uh, that will help prevent these kinds of tragedies in the future. The Honourable Member for Pontiac. Speaker, affordable daycare is so important. It's essential to provide women with the freedom to choose whether they decide to stay home, raise their kid, or pursue their career. But in most cases, balancing both. But women in my writing, Mr. Speaker, tell me that they have trouble finding spot in the daycare. Um, so can the Minister of Family update this House on exactly what the discussion she has with provinces to ensure the success of the $10 daycare? The Minister of Families and Social Development. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Canada-wide system is making life more affordable for Canadian families by delivering on $10 a day childcare in now seven provinces or territories and 50% reduction across the country. As fees have reduced, of course, demand has increased for these spots. And we've seen an increase in the number of spots available with 82,000 new spaces announced by the provinces and territories. The provinces and territories signed on to help build this system together, and we will work the, with them to hold them account to do so. Thank you, Mr. The Honourable Member from Edmonton Riverbend. So the Prime Minister found over $60 million for his Arrive Scam app, but he continues to want to increase the carbon tax by 23% on April 1st. And now we are seeing the far-left NDP Alberta leadership candidates weigh in, and I quote, Nobody is on board with what the Prime Minister did with the federal carbon tax. He absolutely broke trust and broke confidence. After eight years of failure, how can he continue to raise this carbon tax on Canadians? The Honourable Minister for the Environment and Climate Change. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As the Parliamentary Budget Officer has reiterated many times, 8 out of 10 Canadians get a bit more from carbon pricing back than, than what they pay. And carbon pricing works, Mr. Speaker. It helps reduce pollution in Canada, something that the Conservative Party campaigned on during the 2021 election campaign. The difference between them and us is that on this side of the House, we are serious about fighting climate change and working with Canadians to help them face affordability issues. The Honourable Member from Edmonton Riverbend. Well, I have more, Mr. Speaker. The, uh, the, another Alberta leadership candidate said, and I quote, there's no way people can be on board with a federal plan even when the Prime Minister isn't on board when he's playing games with it. And another one said, we must move away from a consumer carbon tax. And another one said, the federal carbon levy is dead. When he loses the support of the far-left Alberta NDP, this minister must know he has a problem. Will he cancel his carbon tax before April 1st, once and for all? The Honourable Minister for the Environment and Climate Change. Mr. Speaker, since we're, we're talking about Alberta, I wonder if the Conservative Party of Canada and its leader support 
the freeze that the provincial government has put on $30 billion worth of investment. Thousands of jobs are at risk in Alberta because of the reckless decision of the Premier to freeze renewable energy development, the fastest sector for energy development in this country, Mr. Speaker. What has the Conservative Party have to say about that? Nothing, because they don't care about economic development, they don't care about fighting climate change, and they don't care about helping Canadians. The Honourable Member from Sarnia-Lambton. Well, Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister wasted more than $60 million on his Arrive Can scam app, and uh, he's going to make Canadians pay more by quadrupling the carbon tax. It's going up 23% on April the 1st. And so, after eight years of this Liberal NDP government, it's no surprise, but this Prime Minister is not worth the cost. Why do Canadians have to foot the bill for this government's corrupt spending? Exactly. The Honourable Minister for the Environment and Climate Change. Right now in Canada, Mr. Speaker, we have a province in, Ontario, in Alberta that has to be talking about rationing water next summer because of climate impacts. We have atmospheric rivers in British Columbia that is affecting thousands of people, ski resorts that have to close down. We're, we're seeing the cost of climate change that have not doubled, not tripled, that have increased 10 times over the last decade. What is the answer of the Conservative Party of Canada? Make pollution free again, Mr. Speaker. Let the biggest, most profitable and polluting countries get off the hook, not on this side of the House, Mr. Speaker. We will fight. Colleagues. It's important once again to remind ourselves that when we take the floor, we're expected to listen to the questions and also to listen to the answers. I ask all men members to please restrain themselves and please follow the leadership of their respective whips uh, to, keep, uh, to respect members who have the floor and who are asking questions or who are answering them. The Honourable Member from Sarnia Lambton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Canadians have been forced to pay through the nose for everything after eight years of this Liberal NDP government. Not only did they give contractors $20 million for doing no work on the Arrive Scam app, but the Auditor General says this $80,000 app cost over $60 million of taxpayer money. Now they're increasing the carbon tax on April the 1st. So why should Canadians have to foot the bill for this government's corrupt overspending? Yeah. The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, in the last election campaign, all of the Honourable Members across from us went around to their neighbourhoods in Sarnia, Lambton and elsewhere with pamphlets, with Mr. O'Toole on the cover, remember the black t-shirt, and what was there in? A... Colleagues. Once again, I ask you to follow the instruction of your whips who are asking you to please listen respectfully to the answer. I'm going to ask the government house leader to start again from the top. Mr. Speaker, in the last election campaign, all of the colleagues on the other side of the House went around their neighbourhoods, around their ridings. They had nice glossy brochures with Mr. O'Toole on the cover. He had a nice black T-shirt on. What was in there? A price on pollution, Mr. Speaker. A price on pollution. All of these members went around their neighbourhoods committing to put a price on pollution as part of a plan to fight climate change. Why did we believe Conservatives then, and why should we believe them now? Thank you. The Honourable Member for Beauport Les Moilleaux. The Liberals will not be able to hide from this Arrive Can scandal so easily. A simple app that should have cost uh, 80000 well, they ended up spending $60 million. $60 million to GC Strategies, which didn't end up actually doing anything. They didn't offer any services. Worse still, the Auditor General has confirmed that this occurred with the support of state employees. Recently, the three involved ministers have been passing the hot potato around, but 
When are we going to get answers about Arrive Can? Canadians deserve answers and accountability. The Honourable Minister of Public Services and Procurement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I thank my colleague for her question. She has heard the answer many times now. We thank the Auditor General for her work. We acknowledge the major issues that she raised. We acted in a time of crisis. That is not an excuse for the lack of information and the lack of record keeping, the lack of record sharing. But thankfully, many of the Auditor General's recommendations have already been implemented. The Honourable Member for Bhopal Limoilou. Quebecers don't understand how it's possible to have a 750% cost overrun without any minister cluing in. A handful of people got $60 million of taxpayer money. The pandemic cannot explain such a total lack of competence regarding basic management. How is it possible to waste $60 million? And how many other contracts like this did the government turn a blind eye to? The Honourable Minister of Public Services and Procurement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In the, heart of, in the middle of the pandemic, hundreds of people were dying of COVID. Billions of dollars were lost weekly. Economic losses. It was very difficult to transit the border, but we made it possible to keep the border open so that essential medication and product and equipment could transit the border for Quebec's businesses and Canada's businesses. But there was a lack of record keeping. There was a lack of thoroughness from some public servants. We acknowledge that and it is totally unacceptable. I ask the member, the member for Port Neuf Jacques Cartier, to please keep some control during answers. I wonder why the Prime Minister's priority is higher taxes and not food affordability. He can find here, here. $60 million for his Arrive Cam app, but he needs to quadruple the carbon tax on farmers and food. We are hearing the pleas from Canadian families who want to axe the tax to make food affordable. I was in Sudbury this week meeting with food banks who are at a breaking point as demand has doubled and is rising. There is a common sense Conservative Bill 234 which will give a carbon tax carve out for farmers and lower the price of food. Mm -hmm. This Prime Minister is not worth the cost, but will he cancel his plans to increase the carbon tax on April 1st so Canadians can feed themselves? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, I'm glad the Conservatives are finally asking a question about the economy because it gives me the chance to share some good news. In January, thanks to the hard work of Canadians, Canada created 37,000 new jobs. Wages in Canada have been outpacing inflation for the past 12 months. And unemployment fell to 5.7%. That is lower than it was at any time that Stephen Harper was Prime Minister. Wow. The only thing the Conservatives know how to do is kill jobs. The Honourable Member from Foothills. Here's a number that most Canadians care about. Two million Canadians going to food bank every single month. But today is Canadian Agriculture Day, and how do the Liberals celebrate? By increasing the carbon tax 23% on April 1st. But it gets worse. We now know that the amendments to 234 pushed through by Liberal appointed senators will increase costs on farmers $200 million. This Conservative common sense bill in its original form will save farmers a billion dollars by 2030. For Canada, a Canada Agriculture Day, will the Prime Minister celebrate with me an access tax on farmers to make food more affordable? The Honourable Minister for Agriculture and Agri-Food. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I appreciate my Honourable Colleague's question. And um, being a farmer on Canada Agriculture Day and being part of a government that has an environmental plan, it makes me very proud. It's so important, and farmers understand, we have to take care of the land and we must have an environmental plan. And as far as the price on, on food, and the Agriculture Committee, Tyler McCann of the Canadian Agri-Food Policy Institute, in indicated to the, Canadian, uh, to the committee members on agriculture that there's no data to support carbon pricing is resulting in an increase in, in food prices. The Honourable Member for Chicoutimi-Lefjord. Mr. Speaker, 
The Prime Minister wasted $60 million on his corrupt ArriveCan app. And now he's asking Canadians for even more money through the carbon tax, which the Bloc wants to radically increase, by the way. After eight years of this government, everything costs more. But worse still, the Bloc Québécois supports Liberal policies. So, Mr. Speaker, will the Prime Minister s confirm that he will scrap the carbon tax so that Canadians can breathe a little more? No, 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 minister, love. The Honourable Minister for the Environment and Climate Change. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to remind my Honourable colleague that the last time I checked, the Saint Laurent, the Saint Lawrence is still in Quebec, and in Quebec, the provincial system applies. They have a cap and trade system, which was implemented well before the federal carbon pricing system. That's what applies in Quebec, and that system in Quebec is working well to reduce Quebec's emissions. The Bloc Québécois didn't implement it, nor did the government. The government of Quebec implemented that system, and in fact, many Conservative members voted in favour of Quebec's system. The Honourable Member from Aurora Oak Ridge's Richmond Hill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We know that sexual and reproductive health care encompasses mental health care, which is always important, but especially so for women during their reproductive lives. Knowing what an exciting but also stressful time it can be for a new mother and how a mother's well-being affects not only her but also her newborn and other family members, could the Minister of Mental Health and Addictions and Associate Minister of Health explain how our government is supporting women who choose motherhood by addressing perinatal mental health? The Honourable Minister for Mental Health and Addiction. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank the member for Aurora Oak Ridge. We all know to her to be a strong advocate for women's health. My message to new parents who might be struggling, you do not have to carry this burden alone. I want to thank the Canadian Perinatal Mental Health Collaborative and all of our partners working to develop national standards for a perinatal mental health strategy. We're supporting families, Mr. Speaker, by creating guidance materials and advice for healthcare professionals and individuals that may face poor mental health during the perinatal period. We are with you and will do everything we can to ensure families have access to quality mental health when they need it and where they need it. The Honourable Member from Peterborough, Carotha Lakes. This Prime Minister is not worth the cost of the suffering he's causing. The Payne family operates Asphodel Sheet Company. They were recognized as Farm Family of the Year in Peterborough yeah, yeah. County. Yeah, yeah. Now, the carbon tax is set to increase 23% on April 1st, and it is truly hurting them. The kids don't know what's going to happen to their family farm. So Katie, who's 15, Jolene, who's 13, and Lucy, who's 9, asked me to ask the Prime Minister this. Why is the Canadian government making it so difficult for the agriculture industry to do their job of feeding the country? The Honourable Minister of the, for the Environment and Climate Change. Mr. Speaker, I would like to read a quote to you from Glenn White, who was the former Vice President of National Farmers Union. And I quote, Farmers will be among the hardest hit if we don't act to slash greenhouse gas emissions and stabilize the climate. For this reason, to protect farmers, the NFU supports pollution pricing, Mr. Speaker. It is an important policy tool to reduce the harmful emission fueling the climate crisis and threatening farms and food supplies. The Honourable Member from Bay of Quinty. Mr. Speaker, we have devastating news today at Bay of Quinty. Cascades, a company that has been operating a plant that's been in existence in Quinty West for 100 years, is closing its doors and axing 230 jobs because of high inflation and interest rates under eight years of this Liberal NDP government. Now Canadians who already face high costs to eat and heat their homes have to worry about a paycheck. And people in Belleville, still reeling from a major overdose epidemic, now have to worry about unemployment. When will this government fix the budget? cut inflation and cut interest rates so companies don't have to close and employees don't have to lose their jobs. Yeah. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, the most important thing to every Canadian family is having a job. And every time someone is a disaster for that family. That's why we were so glad to see the strong job recovery across
across Canada. 1.1 million more jobs since before COVID. It's also why we have support in place, like early learning and childcare, like a social safety net that the Conservatives would cut. Honourable Member from Bave Quinty. Speaker, that tone-deaf answer will give little comfort to the residents of Quinty West who have just lost their jobs. Let's give a real reality look at what's happening in Canada right now. Over the last four months, TD has slashed 3,000 jobs. Canadian Tire has slashed 3% of its workforce. Enbridge has slashed 650 jobs. Rona has slashed 300 jobs. Manulife has slashed 250 jobs. After eight years of this high-spending Liberal NDP government, the only job Canadians want to see slashed is that Prime Minister. When will this government fix the Budget, cut inflation and cut interest rates so Canadians can keep their jobs. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, we will take no lessons from the Conservatives when it comes to supporting the most vulnerable among us. Since we have formed government, 2.3 million Canadians are out of poverty. Poverty in Canada was at 14.5% when the Conservatives left office. Today, it's down to 7.4%. We know there's a lot more work to do. That is why we are pointing out to Canadians that all the Conservatives want is to cut, cut, cut. Cut the programs the most vulnerable need the most. Yeah. From Halifax West. Speaker, in the high cost of living, it's a struggle for many women to buy menstrual products. This government recognizes this problem and recently launched the Menstrual Equity Fund pilot to provide free menstrual products to those that need them most through Food Banks Canada. During the Sexual and Reproductive Health Week, could the minister provide an update on the progress of the pilot in my province and throughout Canada? Yeah. Great question. Honourable Member for Women and Gender Equality. Uh, thank you so much to the member for her advocacy and hard work and for the chance to update this. So, Mr. Speaker, menstrual products are a basic need, but not everyone has access to them. So, since launching the Menstrual Equity Fund pilot last September, almost 400 locations, including 14 in that member's province of Nova Scotia, have helped pull more than a million Canadians out of period poverty. That's 35 million products out the door in six months. We're providing real solutions to real challenges, menstrual products for those who need them, when they need them, period. The Honourable Member for Rosemont La Petite Patrie. Mr. Speaker, a three bedroom apartment near Verdun Metro Station in Montreal. There's a leak in the bathroom, balconies threatening to collapse, holes in the ceiling, mold all over the place. That's the home where Isabelle Gagnon and her partner Maxime Pilon live with their newborn baby. This is a result of decades of conservative and liberal government cuts to affordable housing. Instead of proposing solutions, though, the conservative leader prefers to insult Quebec's mayors, and the liberals are dragging their feet when it comes to the housing crisis. Why are the liberals letting people down, letting down people like Ms. Gagnon and Mr. Pilon? The Honourable Minister for Housing, Infrastructure and Communities. Honourable Member for his question and for his concern for the quality of uh, uh, accommodations that families are living through in this country. He's right to point out that for several decades, uh, governments, both Liberal and Conservative, failed to invest in affordable housing, but that changed with the introduction of the National Housing Strategy in 2017. We've been investing to help build or retrofit several hundred thousand homes that people are living in today. In the fall economic statement, we've recapitalized the affordable housing fund with an additional billion dollars and a another $300 million towards cooperative housing. We're going to continue to make the investments necessary to ensure that every Canadian has a roof over their head. The Honourable Member from Edmonton, Griesbach. Mr. Speaker, as Netanyahu bombs Rafa, the supposed safe zone, over 75 Palestinians were killed overnight. We are witnessing a crime of unproportionate horror in Gaza every day. Children are left orphaned as entire families are wiped out in this onslaught. Meanwhile, the Liberals continue to arm Netanyahu over $28 million worth of military exports since October alone. How how many more Palestinian children have to be killed for this government to end arms exports to Israel? Here, here. The Honourable Prime Minister.
Supplementary Secretary to the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Thank the member for that question. It's an important question. What is happening in Gaza is a complete tragedy. Netanyahu's military operation Rafah is devastating Palestinians and others who are seeking shelter. Gazans have nowhere else to go, and as the minister said, asking them to move again is totally unacceptable. This violence must stop. We must have a sustainable peace. Hostages must be returned, and we must find a way forward to get humanitarian assistance to the people who need it the most. Thank you. Thus comes to an end of question period for today. I see the honourable member from uh, Regina Capel, who is rising on his feet on a, on a point of order. Uh, well, I have a seeking to ask a separate, Mr. Speaker. I would like to move that the House express its solidarity with the parishioners.